welcome to the second part in the gas turbine of the jet engine video. I managed to get a few things together, probably the most important thing is a little bit of clear bench. We've got some parts together ready to start building the engine. I bought an oil pump, a circulating pump, to circulate oil through the turbocharger. Without oil, the turbocharger won't last seconds. I've got some tube, stainless steel tube, doesn't have to be stainless, just I happen to be able to get stainless tube, but tube for the burner can and tube for the flame tube. We discussed the turbocharger last week. This week I'm going to go through a little bit of how they work, what you need to do to make them work. There's one or two little simple formulas that do help you to design and build a turbocharger based jet engine. When I built my first jet engine, there was very little information. Uh, that nobody would tell you anything about hole patterns, how to make things work. It was all trial and error. Now it's all available on the internet. There's loads and loads of info. If you go onto Colin Furzer's YouTube, he's built quite a few jets and he openly tells you how to make things go and how to make it work. This is some of the simple maths that you need to know to work out the dimensions of your flame tube and your burner can. You need to know the size of that hole in there. That's called the inducer. Not that bit, the actual bit where the turbine blades are in there. And that is 40 mil. I know it's 40 mil. So the inducer size is 40 mil. Your flame tube. That needs to be twice the diameter of that. So this piece of tube is an 80mm bore, so that's the correct diameter for the flame tube. It needs to be six times as long, six times four, 240. We've got plenty of length on there, there's 240 there. The holes in this burner tube. I'll do a little sketch. That's your burner tube, which is twice the diameter of the inducer and six times as long as the diameter. The amount of holes in here need to be the same size or the same area is the area of your inducer. There's three types of hole. You've got your primary holes, which are quite small, probably six mil or so. Then you've got your secondary holes, which are bigger. Then you've got your third or tertiary holes, which are bigger again. The first set of holes need to be 30% the area, then 20, then 50. In here you have a fuel source, it's going to be propane and you have an electric spark. The idea is that the flame burns between here and here. That's where all the combustion takes place, where the air is massively heated and expands. These holes here are cooling holes, you need cooling air to go in there to cool the hot air as it comes out. It's easy to make a turbocharger, run as a jet engine. You see loads of them on YouTube in the compressor vein, sorry, the turbine veins. That wheel there is glue and white hot and it blows itself apart. That's why the design of the flame tube is critical. So if you're going to drill holes in there, 30% area, 20% and then 50% for the cooling. The burner can needs a 15 mil gap each side of the flame tube. It's actually 20 on this, that's just the, the tube I could get, that will still work fine. Right, so we've got a burner can. Flame tube's inside of it. We have various holes getting slowly 
but surely bigger towards the end. Fuel in here, compressed air from the turbocharger outlet goes into here. Circulates around here, going through all the holes. Massive fire in there, fantastic heat generation, expansion of gases, and in here, loads and loads of air to try and cool it down. From here, you go on to the hot seat of your turbo, that's where a normal car exhaust would go on to. That's that bit there. So that bit is fastened onto there. The hot gases into there spin that turbine wheel, which in turn spins a compressor. Atmospheric pressure into there, and air comes out of here under really high pressure, well, probably one bar, into there, and it blows into there, and that's how it works. So instead of having a car engine, you have a burner can. Burn a can flame tube, and that's basically how it's going to work. That's loads to do, loads of engineering, welding, machining. I'm going to make a base for it to stand. It's just going to be a stationary thing at first. I'm going to use aluminium if I can find some box section aluminium to make a base for it, just so it's light enough to carry around. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this project. I haven't done a jet engine for quite some time. I made one little part today. That's going to go onto there. And then that's going to be fastened onto the burner can. I made it longer so I can mount it onto a bracket to support it all. But basically that's a mass that should get you in the ballpark and hopefully we'll get it running. 